So welcome to the Fund Your Passion podcasts brought to you by JBR Capital. And I'm delighted to say we're here in person. Darren and I have made the trip up to Tom Hartley. So Darren, first Hello. of all, exciting to be in person. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited. It's the first venture out to um, a dealer site to, to uh, do our Fund Your uh, Passion podcast. And who better to do it with than Tom Hartley, yeah, thank you uh, who I held in very high esteem. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot from Tom, some great stories, um, some market updates. And, and Amanda, I'm sure you'll tell us a lot more about what's going on uh, today. Well, I will. But first of all, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Um, a <laughs> bit of a milestone. Yeah, I, uh, I was 60 uh, a few days ago. And um, where you're sitting now, I was telling you earlier, uh, 39 years ago, I arrived here in a caravan. And the space sport. In fact, where you're sitting was the living room of a two-bedroom bungalow, and now it's uh, 46 acres of of uh, supercars, uh, three houses, a famous car stage, and undoubtedly the most famous landmark for such products as this. Did you allow yourself a little bit of time, obviously with that birthday milestone, to actually sit back, reflect, and give yourself a pat on the back? You know, it's interesting. Um, as you're aware, I, I uh, had an autobiography come out last year called The Dealmaker. And, and I was spending a day a week from 8.30 in the morning till 8.30 at night with the ghostwriter and one of my PAs in the boardroom up the stair writing that book. And in answer to the question you just asked me, it was the first time, I think I told you this, Darren. You did. It was the first time in my life I ever had time to reflect on what I'd done in my life. And it was very emotional uh, in good ways and bad ways because it was giving me time that I've never given myself, which is quite hard to understand or believe. In that journey, where I'm so focused and doing what I do and getting on with it and moving forward, I've never ever stopped and thought, hold on a second, because I was writing my book, I had to remember it and I had to relive it and I had to be, have a reflection. And like I said to you, that was the only time I ever um, took on board what, what, what success and achievement has happened to me during my journey. I guess, obviously, birthday and the book and having having to go through that process of bringing up some of those memories. Again, it gave you time, you time to think about it. But what's been the response from everybody who's read it or seen the book? Because it's only recently come out. Yeah, well, it's been like 12 months. It's a bestseller on Amazon. Um, it's in America now. It's in, it's in, um, it's in Hong Kong, it's Australia, it's all over the world. The response, I think Darren will tell you, uh, in the trade or in the industry, it uh, it's had an incredible response. Um, the public itself, I, I get letters on a daily basis, uh, definitely weekly basis, but sometimes quite daily basis, of how inspiring it's changed people's uh, mindset and business and how they've uh, adapted to um, how my life unfolded for me and how not to give up in life and to be determined. And if you want it bad enough, you'll get it. Um, I can tell you something quite, quite very difficult uh, to be able to accept or understand, but where you're sitting now, Darren, this whole thing, this whole thing, I had a vision of this when I was 12 year old. You did not. I, I, I had a vision of what I, I had a vision of this setup when I was 12, 13 year old. Wow. And that's very difficult sometimes to see that to people, but it's, I swear my life is the truth. So, Darren, this is your copy, isn't it? This is my copy that I bought. I pre ordered it months mm -hmm. before because I want to make sure I got a copy. I brought it especially today <laughs> because I want Tom to sign it for me. I've been waiting for this moment for over a year. <laughs> Uh, but we're here to do it today. I, I've read the book cover to cover. I found it absolutely fascinating. And actually, uh, you, are, you are quite correct. I found um, a lot of the book quite inspirational because, you know, it, it would be easy for people to think and the general public to think that, um, you know, it's been an easy ride for Tom Hartley throughout his career. And actually, if you read the book, it's not. There, there has been some uh, significant um, setbacks, but it's, it's the way that you've dealt with those setbacks that are, you know, quite uh, or inspiring. And, you know, I certainly sat back and thought, wow, you know, I've, I've had setbacks in my own life. We all have setbacks, but it's, it really is about how you deal with them. And, you know, you know coming today and uh, I always, always love coming to the site and, and seeing um, uh, what you have achieved. But I'll let you into a little secret. I first knew about Tom Hartley um, when I first started into this trade in 2003. And the first thing I used to do every Sunday was open up the Times and look at the Tom Hartley page as the classifieds. And, look, and, and I was monitoring the prices. It was my way of trying to understand what the market was doing, what the trends were doing. So even back all, all that time ago, and I didn't know you, I was looking to see what Tom Hartley was done. And that is 
uh, you know, quite typical of what the market does today. A lot of people do, you know, value and respect Tom's views on cars and uh, certainly on, on values. Uh, I think often you're marking down cars and values long before other people. Absolutely. Uh, other people still is. living in dreamland mm. that uh, they're going to get um, the price for the car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so very inspirational for me. And, you know, we didn't have a business relationship to much much further on in, in my career, but I, I was certainly tracking you a long time earlier. Yeah. I'm yeah. tempted to make some comment here about Donald Trump with his book and going into politics. We're not going to be seeing you running in a political capacity anytime yeah. yeah. soon, you, are we? You, you know, it's funny you should say that because, um, uh, sorry, last year I was presented um, by the local government. They, they, they presented me with the coat of arms for South Derbyshire for my contribution to investments and business for this area which was an incredible honour. Um, it was presented to me and I, and I really, it was very moving, it was very emotional, because I, again, reflecting, this guy's telling me what I've achieved and what I haven't achieved, I'm listening to him, I'm thinking, you know, I felt a little bit embarrassed, but then I said to myself, this is, he's only telling the truth. He isn't saying anything, it's not the truth. <laughs> and, uh, and because of that, excuse me, I'm now into education. I, I, my book is given to universities, to colleges, uh, colleges all over the country and, and, and local to us is, is a very famous boarding school called Repton and I've just um, got involved with them to be a speaker for their children and their pupils to teach them entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and leadership things that no disrespects to the school teachers in that uh, in that school they can't teach them that stuff because they're not entrepreneurs absolutely well we're going to come on to that in okay. a minute yeah so but so for, for me and, and politics i don't i'm not into politics but i get asked a lot of times about my advice and and i work very close with the local government here um because of uh, where i am i've got a question Go on, you mentioned about entrepreneurship and teaching entrepreneurship, but is that really something you can teach people or do you think it's just something that comes from within? Yeah, I, I always use a famous line on that note, yeah. is gut feeling experience is far better than research and training. That's why they're coming here. Yeah. I would say, as well, I've felt it from here, yeah. I'll try to, you know, some of the kids, uh, 12 year olds to 18 year olds, um, and I'm not aiming at the best one in the classroom, I'm actually aiming at the worst one in the classroom. So listen, you never feel down because I've learned so much things from being involved with education, especially colleges. Uh, Loughborough, Loughborough College had, a, had an award, a business award for a student for 200 years, and that award never had a name till last year, and now it's called the Tom Hartley Award. It's called the Tom Hartley Award by somebody I can't read and write. You need to understand I had no school education. I left school when I was 11. Gosh. So apart from writing a few words, and reading is very difficult for me, but second reads everything to me. So education wise, uh, and the academics in life is, is poor for me. I'm very good at maths. I can go from one to ten very quickly. <laughs> and I can do my sums as Darren will tell you. So that, to me, uh, but I, I do believe at that age, um, you really, you, you set the plan for where you want to be and what you want to do. And you can yeah. do that if you want to. Yeah. And, and time is a great asset to have by developing. What, what motivated you then to get involved with education, school children, university? What, what was that trigger? Well, I feel I need to give it back. To, I need to give back to my, to my uh, area. You know, I need to give something back to it. And they've, looked, they've come to me with uh, open arms. They looked on, you know, this is, this is the flagship for South Derbyshire, believe it or not. There used to be a flagship uh, Toyota, uh, mm. Toyota, which is built here. Now, they look at this as, as a flagship to fetch uh, international investors mm -hmm. when they arrive. The visit here. There's a boardroom up the stair that will be used, and th th this will be their flagship for what what a business you, is. You only need to look at the the photographs in 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 your book of the site when you first moved here, mm. and then look at what the site has become and what you've developed. I mean, you know, it's it's extraordinary. Well, th this uh, 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 this showroom in particular, um, we'll we'll go to the old showroom later. But this showroom in particular, uh, we've developed the different to anything else other than UK um, and it's a state-of-the-art showroom it's just on a glass floor just now and um, there's a famous a fantastic car lift there everything about this building is different as my son Carl said it's a standard of where showrooms will be in 10 years time and when you visit the Hartley estate unlike a showroom in the city centre uh, from the minute you arrive at the gates to the minute you leave it's, it's a completely different experience than anywhere else it's not just about the cars it's the grounds the flowers the gardens, the manicured lawns, 
everything is immaculate here and that's who I am. I'm a bit OCD with that type of stuff. Well, it is incredible. And I want to talk more about the place and the setup that you've got in a little bit. But let's just talk about the market quickly. Um, it's been a difficult few months. Um, mm. I think COVID has definitely put the brakes on a lot of things. But how have you seen it? And what's been your gut reaction you, to... You know, you, you know, in contrary to what you're seeing and how the market is for the Tom Hartley brand, because we're very flexible and we, we react very quickly to the market business, Darren was saying earlier, um, business is good when it's good and it's even better when it's bad for others. I don't know if it makes sense for that, mm -hmm. but we, we're always buyers of cars, whatever the marketplace does. Mm -hmm. uh, we set the price trends. As Darren said, we're first to react to the market prices, may it be 50,000 less or 50,000 more. It's instant. You know, by the time the others make their mind up and the others arrive there, we've been and done it and it's, it's happened. That's because we have 48 years of in-house experience, me in particular, that I share with my son Carl, who's a partner in the business, and we're able to arrive at, there's a market and there's our price. And all I'm interested in is our price and our business. So it's quite simple to do that. When we were talking just before we started this, you mentioned um, you've obviously been in the industry for many, many years. 48 years. But this was never really your passion. This was never really where you saw well, yourself going. Well, my book's called The Dealmaker because I do deals. I do deals every day of the week, uh, be it in property or in cars. Cars predominantly. The name Tom Hartley is a brand famous for supercars, luxury cars and classic cars. That's what I do. But it's the deal. It's the deal. I'm a people's person. It's about the deal for me. It happens to be cars. But, you know, it's all about the deal. So it could just as easily have been property, horses. It could, it could have been other things, but I, I, as a younger man, I had a, a more of a passion for cars than I probably do. These are assets to me. Mm -hmm. the, the, the numbers are commodities, and, and, and it's easy. I think I told you earlier, I'm seen driving a Volkswagen Golf diesel. It was, it was crazy. I was in London on Saturday driving there. You didn't call me. No, I was in London on Saturday, and I was in there with Discovery, <laughs> of course. I was in a, a very well-known restaurant in, in Mayfair. Yeah. And... Um, and you didn't I know call which me. one. I know which one because I saw the photo. So yeah, I was outside, and, and you know, it, it, I, I'm not. Do they sell fish? I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not a snob. Yeah, listen, I'm not a snob, yeah. and, I, and listen, I don't drink tea. Out of, I will not drink tea out of a mug, not because I'm a snob. It's just I like to drink tea out of a cup. Yeah, I'm saying that to you to understand my personality. To anyone who might be watching this this podcast, I, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. On Saturday, there was about half a dozen or so. I was sitting outside, half a dozen or so different. Followers, I actually get more, I'm more well known in London than I am in any yeah. other part of the country. So these guys were stopping having a photograph taken with me, and, and there's these two young ladies, beautiful young ladies, beside me um, from Cheshire, and I had a conversation with them prior to all this happening. Yeah. So the lady walked up and said, "Not being rude, but should I know who you are?" <laughs> so I said, I said well, and the, the restaurant manager was laughing his head off the high fives cars at the front. I said, "Unless you're into cars," I said, "You shouldn't." But then the other day he said, ah, I knew my husband, I knew your name from somewhere, but they were still yeah. like, who is, who is this guy? These people <laughs> keep stopping by. That's what I get up every day for. That, for, for what, 48 years has brought yeah. me to that standard. You know, I'm a car dealer. At the end of the day, I'm a car dealer. How many car dealers go into London and the, 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 the face is known, or the, they're known who they are, um, because of, that's the sort of cars you see in London. And people recognise me, know me there. Have them in airports, people recognise me. That's from 48 years of being in the business. Does that but, sit comfortably with you? It does because I said I'm a people's person yeah. and, and I'm not a snob. But there's a people's person, but there's also that intrusion into you just sitting having lunch. Well, unfortunately, I happen to be in a high, I, I happen to be in a high profile business and, and, and I have a profile that I'm very proud of during that 48 years. It's been very difficult to build it, but I protect it with great interest and, and I trade off my reputation. And, and, and you can do that after 48 years in, that, in business. And to say that, no, I would be the wrong type of person. That is not me at all. Um, if somebody went out of the way to actually say, hi, it's Tom Hartley, uh, could I have a quick photograph? I would never, ever, 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 ever be disturbed by that. I think, I think it's fair to say one of your special qualities, if I, if I call it that, is, is your innate ability to talk to anybody, Absolutely. That's whether that's it's royalty fact. or the yeah. dustbin yeah, man. And, that's what and you, like, you treat yeah. everyone the same. Yeah. And uh, I think that is well known. Yeah, no, no, that, no, is no, that is me. That's what I'm all about. I, yeah. I, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Does that skill, that sort of ability to communicate to everybody on a level playing field, does that help you sell cars? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's as strong as I said I've got. As strong as I said I've got. I think understanding to be able to communicate and uh, relate to people's requirements, needs and, and read people if I, if I wasn't, if I hadn't been uh, uh, in the car business, I would like to have been a lawyer. Oh, really? Yeah. 
because I really, I, I do understand people. And unfortunately, not everybody tells the truth in life and in business, that's a part of life. But um, yeah, I think the skill of being able to, uh, as Darren said, communicate with, uh, it could be Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber, or it could be a guy selling bikes on the top corner shop. Mm -hmm. That gap. And I actually, I think it's perfect because uh, my own experiences of dealing with customers who are buying high value vehicles is um, it doesn't matter how wealthy or, or poor or that's probably the wrong word, but from whatever background um, you come from or you know, whether you're well known or not so well known, um, I found when it comes to cars and talking about the cars, they all turn into little boys or, or girls and just become very passionate about, uh, about the cars they're buying and just want to talk and talk and talk mm. and talk and um, you know, to be able to talk to, to whomever I think is a, a fantastic skill. No, it's, um, it's a great asset. I mean, some people are shy and, 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 uh, and uh, we're all different. We all do go about different things different ways. This business has been built on uh, my uh, being up front. I mean, some of the famous stories going back to the, back to the mid 80s, when I stopped the guy, it's in my book, by the way, when I stopped the guy outside the Hilton Hotel, he'd just taken delivery of a new Jaguar XJ40 and you couldn't get them about two or three year waiting list. And it was the first one I saw, it only been launched 48 hours or so. And I'm going to the Hilton Hotel and the car pulled up. Guy opened the back door for his chairman to get out with his briefcase. I said, do you want to sell that car? I said, what do you mean do I want to sell it? I said, I'll buy that car from you. He said, well, why do you want to buy it? I said, I'll give you more than what you just paid for that car. Because not everybody understood in them times that cars made premiums yes. and you could get more money for a car yep. than what you paid for it. He gave 33,000 quid for this car at that time, which was a lot of money in 1986. Anyway, um, he said, what will you pay me for it? I said, I'll give you, you 3,000 pounds more than what you paid for it. So I think it was at the time, 36 and a half thousand quid. And he said, okay, you've got a deal. He said, but I've got a meeting. I said, well, you can do your meeting. By the time you come out of your meeting, I'll have a banker's draft for you. That's what you done in them days. You had a banker's draft, which is a certified check. I went to Oxford Street branch, Nat West, come, come back with the banker's draft. He came out of his meeting and I gave him, I left him with no car, a banker's <laughs> draft. He reported that to the Evening Standard. And I got a phone call from a, a, a reporter saying, I, I, we've just been told about a story that you bought a car outside the Hilton Hotel yesterday and left the guy with his briefcase. I told him the story. Next thing I know, BBC are here. Mm. And a very famous reporter who got, got killed in Afghanistan called Mike, Don, uh, Mike Donkin, he, he, he done the, he done the live, live programme from here. Because it was a British car mm. and I was, buying, I was paying premiums for these cars and stopping people on the street or wherever I've seen them, that's what I do, that's what I did in them days. Yeah. And they made a big thing of it. So it was, that was really, uh, and then next, on the back of that was Top Gear, who filmed here three times in three different decades, uh, which is quite an achievement. Do you know what strikes me about that? I mean, obviously, that's quite, it's a great story, but it's actually your memory for the, for the numbers well, back I, in the 1980s. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, yeah. I don't, do you know, I can talk to, <clears throat> I can get a call, a call from a guy I sold a car to 20 years ago, and talking to his voice, I can remember who he is. Wow. And it's, you see, that's a skill that you can't teach young people. No, no but it's called dedication and focus. You know, is it? You, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, okay. I think you, when you're so focused on your business and what you do, yes. I eat, breathe, and sleep this business seven days a week. Yeah, I thought I was the man that never stops, but I'm you're, you've completely got some stiff out, competition here. Completely <laughs> outdone and, by Tom. And I've taken, you know, I've tried to, it's how, it's how I am. I have about four hours sleep, four or five hours, that's all I need. I do emails, I can show you my telephone, I was doing emails to America. I've just sold a, a Morgan to a very famous, I can't say who it is at this minute in time, probably the most famous entertainer in America. Um, and I was doing emails with him at three o'clock this morning uh, from, from, from my bedroom. So does it ever stop? Do you no. ever switch off? No. Is there, is there always, are you always open for a deal? Uh, every time I'm breathing and my eyes are open, or even sometimes when I'm sleeping, I'm always thinking about a deal. Have the Hartleys ever had a holiday? Because I did read in the book there were some holidays. Yeah, I do, I do have holidays, but I also take my office with me, so it's just yeah. how I am. My wife's used to that now, and yeah. uh, she accepts it. She understands that we, 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 we've done this together, yeah. and she, she's, she's a housewife and, um, and a mother, and that's the part and the role that she plays that makes it be able for me to do what I do, the way that I do it, and she, she's used to that. It wouldn't be for everybody. It's getting a little bit better than it used to be, yeah. um, but it's still... It, to answer to your question, I always think about doing deals. Family is obviously important, mm. and you've got a lot of your family around you. Mm. How much a part does that play in your day-to-day -day business, but also how proud does it make you as a father? Well, all my children were school educated uh, in my office, in my showroom here, the same way as I was. I left school at 11. They all left school at the same age, believe it or not. 
and I self-educated them. And what's quite interesting is, back in the late 80s, when I was doing this with my children, I was getting all sorts of slack from, um, I was appearing on things like Esther Ranson's show, <laughs> Vanessa Phillips, Kilroy, these were all famous shows. Yes. And they said, Mr. you can't take your children out of school, and, and this is legal, so listen, I can, because I believe they're learning more with me and what I can give them in life to what they're going to achieve from school, and that's how it was. I had to register with a company called Education Otherwise, which were a government body, and they, they're normally around for, uh, for kids who get sexually abused mm. at school or get mm. abused, so they have to take them out for that reason. That wasn't my case. My case was I wanted my children to be educated here. The essence of the story and the point of me telling you how that was with me and how challenging I had to demonstrate to critics out there, uh, one of my sons happened to be one of the youngest self-made millionaires uh, in business, UK business. And my mother's son was the youngest, uh, the wealthiest under 30 year old in the rich list. So I didn't do a bad job educating them uh, myself. I, you know, I think I, I gave them the right things that they needed to know. In conclusion to that, when I started writing this book, the first day we sat in the office to, to write the book, there's a full page article in a lot of the national press. Simon Cowell had decided that he didn't want his son to be go to school, he wanted to educate him in his business. And we laughed, me and my girlfriend laughed because he, he'd known my, my story for so many years. Yeah. And, 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 and um, um, the politics now and, and, and the Prime Minister is urging young people to be entre entrepreneurs as, as young as possible. So what they're doing now, I've done 30 odd years ago with my children. Yeah. How do your children feel about that? So uh, do they have children? Are yep. they educating their children in the same way that you educated them? No, I think it's a bit different now, to be honest with you. I think it is a little bit. I had this conversation with Carl the other day. Um, because of my connection with Repton School now, mm -hmm. um, we're thinking about sending my children and my grandchildren to Repton School, Carlos. And, I, and he said, you know, Dad, <coughs> I've got no complaints with what, how I've turned out in life and, and, and the opportunities you gave me. My kids were never born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And that's what's sad when you've got such a successful father who's achieved a lot of things in life. I can feel sorry for how other children feel within that family. So I made it, I really made it a point that they, they earned what they got and they understood the value of money, as they still do today. And my son's a partner in this business. He wasn't given a share of this business. He earned his share in this business. And the same with my other son, who now works on his own. Um, it, it, it's how I brought my children up. It's, it's, it's respect and, and the value of money. Mm -hmm. it's, a it's a difficult challenge, isn't it, these days? Very when difficult. you're certainly talking about such <clears throat> big sums. But as well as, obviously, family, um, you've also got incredibly loyal clients. Yeah, how I, have you managed to achieve that? Well, I could trade, I, we could trade off. In answer to the question about how the market's been, um, lockdown for us, we've never had lockdown because we work from home. That's what I've always done. This, this is, you know, walk, I walk 65 yards left one showroom, 65 yards left another showroom. And so we were trading in lockdown. We were trading with clients all over the world. And the business was unbelievable. I couldn't, it was embarrassing to see how much business we were doing because we were really the only supercar dealership open in the UK that could deal with clients, everything else was closed. Mm. Um, and then when, the re when it did reopen, everybody caught up with how the market was and they couldn't believe it. We'd already had four months of that and I knew what it was and what it was like. And even as we speak today, all the shit that's going on in the world is, is horrible shit. Um, I, I don't believe, in fact, I know it's a fact, everybody, every business from an insect, insect catcher to an art dealer, to a diamond dealer, to a property person, has never had it so good. You might see something on the news now about ICI or BP or something like a conglomerate. I think you understand what I'm trying to say yeah. here. That's where they're so slow and that's where the market's been affected. But I'm telling you, as far as independent businessmen and entrepreneurs are concerned, yeah. business and the economy has never been so yeah. good. Especially in, in the luxury goods sector. The luxury goods sector has fared particularly well and, and very, very shortly after lockdown opened from, from June onwards, um, it's just been insatiable, mm. uh, and certainly from 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 our perspective, from JBR Capital's perspective in, in financing um, of luxury cars, uh, it's it's as busy now, more busy than it has been in uh, than I've ever seen in 20 years. But I did tell you that last year, didn't I? You told did. You we went me. open, and you kept no, telling I me. I told you. I mean, I, you I kept told telling you guys me. Went open. Yeah. I told them yeah. exactly how it was going to be. You said when you come back to London, you're missing out. <laughs> we yeah. said we're trying. So obviously, a lot of these cars um, that you sell and and you deal in, they are investment cars as well. So are you seeing people sort of making these speculative purchases, particularly at the moment? You know, is that affecting the way the pricing is going? You know, are people 
are people buying cars that they wouldn't necessarily normally buy using finance because they are speculating on where the market's going? Well, the, the, the biggest move in, 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 in my uh, era being in this business was 2008, when, when the banks were crashing and everything was going pear-shaped. Um, very wealthy people, very, very old money, as I'd call it, um, were, were buying into classic cars. Mm -hmm. And classic car prices went from, from, you know, from what was a, a normal standard to a, a, just a ridiculous uh, growth in investment. And um, that was the biggest move in the fastest uh, uh, development for people doing that type of thing. Uh, it slowed up a bit and now you know people are investing into cars like pieces of art. So they are buying them, Porsche in particular, Ferrari. I know you're not a big Porsche fan, but uh, I thought I'd have to say <laughs> You've that. You've travelled quite a bit fast, hasn't it? So, so, but you know, um, yeah, they're investments. It's not that I don't like Porsches, it's I just know. that I would prefer something else. I just think yeah, it just yeah. anyway. Um, so, where do you see the market going then, um, long term, in terms of long long term trends? I mean, we're looking around the showroom here. I notice there's a distinct lack of super modern when we're looking at sort of EVs. Are you seeing a shift towards that, or do you think that this love for internal combustion engines will remain? That'll always be that'll always remain. It'll always be the case. It'll always be a situation where um, people buy these cars, as you you said earlier, raw cars, petrol cars things that make noises and that are fast, um, that law was, that law, that law would be around. Um, but, but um, you know, when you deal with a finance company like JBR and, um, and, and, and the presence they have in the marketplace today, over the years I've dealt with probably every finance company that's out there somewhere or another. Some are better than others. But some, well, they are, but they, these guys at JBR just, uh, they just know how to get the job done. And that's what's important no, to me. I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what's important to me is get the, get the job done. And, uh, it's important. And when you work with the finance company, and, and I'm very instant, you know, I, I'm not one of them, I don't do tomorrow what I can do today. Mm -hmm. And these guys will tell you, uh, when they're dealing with me in particular, from any sale from here, once I've done the deal, I won't paid. I yeah. need to move on. Yeah. And these guys do that. You must have some great motoring memories. Is, are there any real memories that stand out over the years of trading or any cars in particular that you've loved or hated? You know, uh, I love, unlike you, I love Porsches. <laughs> and and uh, I'm keeping my point over, sorry. I'm not a big, I did tell you I'm not a big McLaren fan, but that's... See, uh, I like this. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very different and I wouldn't drive it on the road, but as a work of art, I think it's beautiful. I yeah. also love the colours. No good for kissing your girlfriend in there because you're driving in the middle of the seat. So, <laughs> unless you've got two girlfriends, there's no good having the car well, at all. Well, we have got an ongoing discussion. I need a new car but I have two Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Really? So the challenge has always been to find me a car that I can get my two dogs in. Well, that's a car, yeah. <laughs> you better take it home. 2.3 <laughs> million you can drive home today. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. We can finance it for you. It's Thank fine. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, but, uh, so are there any cars that really stand out? Um, Ferrari play a big part. Uh, I mean, Rolls-Royce in my earlier days, believe it or not, in the 70s, Rolls-Royce played a big part of uh, uh, my journey because they were a very strong premium car at the time. Uh, unlike any other car and what a lot of people don't know one of the first premium cars I believe I created the premium market at the very start of my uh, career back in 72 and the car I created that with was a Range Rover wow um, yeah which a lot of people know that not a lot of people know that Range Rovers in 1970 uh, cost 1960 pounds and they were selling for like two and a half thousand which was a fortune yeah you consider the price of the car to what it was trading for because of its lack of uh, supply Interesting you talked about Rolls-Royce there, because to many people that would be a premium brand, and yet I see one here. We have, is it not really a brand that is traded no, much? No, we have a couple actually, believe me. There's one here, but there's, there's two over there. Okay. So yeah, we haven't been to the other showroom yet. And no, no, it's a, um, uh, it's, it's a brand. It's, um, uh, Rolls-Royce to me, uh, luxury car, you can have all luxury cars, your Mercedes-Benz, your, your, your BMWs, um, and, and all the rest of them, and uh, there's no car when you drive it, it gives you the same sensation as the Rolls Royce for success. Now, to some people it's too ostentatious, um, which I can understand. As opposed to this, which just slips under the radar. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, so but in answer to the question, Rolls Royce is, to me, is the ultimate of luxury and quality, and it always will be. Mm. The cars will always be judged on the same quality as the Rolls Royce of whatever. It might be the seat you're sitting on, it's the Rolls Royce of seats. It'll always be judged as that is the best. Is there a, is there a strong market, though, in that? Yeah. Sector, or is it yeah. all super luxury? No, no, luxury? no, 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 no
extraordinarily successful. Yeah, the residuals have been not very good on them, but yeah. you know that, that's all about now people are choosing to buy them when they couldn't buy them or didn't want to buy them when they were 400 or yeah. 370, now they're 250 for a second hand one or, or thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big difference in value for money. And anything that scars your memory? Um, one of the first, uh, in my earlier days, uh, in 79, I lost £10,000 in the Aston Martin um, Volante. I never, I never forgot that. In fact, I had two of them. And uh, I, I traded out of one to lose 10000 At the time, the car was £40,000. And I was asking, uh, the car was £40,000. I paid forty five for it, uh, trying to sell it for fifty at the time. And I ended up taking um, £10,000 loss. And I always remembered that. That sort of loss. I, I made lots of losses in life. But at that time, where my finances were, back in 79, that was a big, that was a big loss and, and, and that one always stays with me. And over the years, how have you seen the business change? Obviously there are people come into it, you've remained at the top of the heap, uh, uh, but how do you see the business change and how do you see it moving in the future? I, uh, I, asked, I was asked a question the other day by um, uh, an ind- uh, a, a, a magazine company, it's very big in the industry, and they said, Tom, we were doing some research and going real back to the 70s and there's you and there's a couple of other names and there's nobody else. Would that be the case? And I said, well, there's probably two names I can think of that are around now with um, <coughs> with Tom Hartley and the other two names, they're slightly older guys. They're really not active now. It's very just, it's taken over and it's, it's what it is. Uh, I'm 60, they're probably 75. In fact, one guy's 80. Um, but the rest of it is, uh, is no. There's been lots of newcomers. They come, they arrive, they make a, a big noise. They look at the Tom Hartley outfit, think, as Darren said, mm. it's easy. What they don't know is I live this seven days a week with my son. We eat, live and breathe it. Uh, you have to be on top of that amount of time. To, there's big gambles, big assets here. Uh, you know, there's millions and millions and millions of pounds with a, with of inventory. Mm. Um, and, and that takes, unlike being down as probably worst customer, I've never had a finance agreement, mortgage or a loan in my life, which is a big statement to make. I'm not saying anything normal doing that, but I'm telling you I've never had one. Yeah. Wow. So it's reinvested, 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 growth, 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 growth. And, and what you see here is what you get. I think it's fair to say you've been in for the long haul and it, it comes, you know, this unbelievable drive and passion that has come from a very early age. And, and what we've seen, certainly in the independent um, luxury dealer market, is over, over the last decade, uh, maybe, maybe longer, 15 years, there's been a, a number of new entrants, as they say, into the market. And it tends to be someone who's... Uh, been in the industry but doesn't have the, the money, the backing. They find the backing from a wealthy customer who's got an interest in cars and passionate about it. Um, and then they go off starting on their own thinking it's all going to be so easy. But they tend not to have the same work ethic or, or background. And once the funder behind them um, loses interest, because um, for whatever reason, it, it kind of just falls away. So you often see lots of people entering the market mm. and lots of people few years later leaving the market and over the years has been a core like Tom who've you know just grown and grown and dominate the market mm. that that's what that's what we've seen but that's um, the story of every every, every mm. marketplace really in, in, in every business it's, it's how it is uh, and in the car business there's no exception to that yeah. you know there's a lot of people want to have all this but they don't want all the problems go with it and they want all the hard work it takes to get there so it's, it's quite difficult right I've got my final question for you we always have this. What is your all-time favourite car? I get asked that question every day of my life. Sorry. Every day of my life. And do you give the same answer? They're all much, Don't say they're, golf. They're all much. They're all much. They all do the same sort. I think you'll be, you, you're the expert to even confirm this with me. They all do much of the same thing. Yes, they do. You know, they all do what they do. Yeah. They just do a little bit different. Yeah. Um, Ferrari is probably the strongest brand I believe, apart from Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. in the world Mm -hmm. and I think what they do with the product and how they handle it how they manage it how they produce it is fantastic so I've got a lot of respect for them but Rolls Royce plays a big part of my my career because I said Mm -hmm. to you in my earlier days so as an answer to your question I love all brands um, but probably Ferrari would take the forefront which which one Uh, La Ferrari Aperta very nice we just had one go out here two days ago and um, it was debatable whether we're going to sell it or not I said to Carl you know I'll pay you out and I'll keep this car but like Carl said, I wouldn't drive it. You know, it's, it, these, I only use these occasionally. Um, it, it's just I do love, I do love yeah. a LaFerrari. I think it's a great car. 
I think we're doing quite well on the Ferrari we stakes, are, aren't we? We were <laughs> almost on the same page. For me, it was the Enzo. Um, yeah. For me. Yeah. Enzo, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, it was the, the car that I started out in the trade back um, in the 2000s and I funded around 22 of them, so it was quite a big number. Well, I've sold, I've sold yeah. loads of them. You've sold, sold more than I've Yeah, I've sold loads of them, loads of them. Yeah. It's what I do. And I love the LaFerrari, I love the Enzo. But LaFerrari for me is, is my favourite supercar. Uh, I'm not a Bugatti fan. No. They don't do it for me. No. I sell lots of them. We sell, he'll tell you, we sell more second hand Bugattis than any dealer, including Bugatti themselves, <laughs> second hand ones. Yeah. Okay. But the, the dust don't do it for me. No. I don't think you have to spend that sort of money to get the. the it, but after saying that, yeah. the LaFerrari is more money. But I, however, the whole perception of a Bugatti for me and the maintenance cost is, is exactly. just taking the crazy. Well, listen, Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and thank you very much for hosting us for our first ever in person. Thank you. It's been and fantastic. It's been an honour to be the first and, uh, and as CJBR, it's always a pleasure dealing with you guys. Thank you. And it's been a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you very much. And I hope you have enjoyed this episode and be sure to join us for the next one. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.